when refrigeration was invented, it was revolutionary. But the companies that created refrigerators made only some amount of money. On the other hand, companies like Pepsi and Coca-Cola, which leveraged refrigeration in their businesses, made the most money. And these were the companies that actually ended up building empires. Now, LLMs like GPT-40 and Gemini are like those refrigerators. And the Coca-Cola of AI is yet to be built. But here is where most people ask me that Ansh, what skills should a non-technical beginner learn to stay relevant and crack a record-breaking salary or even start a new business? This video is going to act as a practical step-by-step -step roadmap for you to plan your career and business. This is your dost Ansh Mehra. Welcome to the Cutting Edge School enabled by the Zero One Network by Zerodha. Let me show you what exactly the World Economic Forum discovered in their Future of Jobs report. So the WEF report listed the top 26 core skills that will be on the rise for 2025 to 2030. And the list is pretty long. So I have picked the top six skills with the highest net increase. So the Future of Jobs report had a very important graph that basically explained the skills that will be on the rise from 2025 to 2030. Now this is where they have listed all the skill sets in the middle, they have this very important graph that shows you the share of employees that consider skills to be increasing, decreasing or remaining stable in importance. Now, on the very top, we have skills like AI and big data. And at the very bottom, we have skills like manual dexterity, endurance and precision. I'll share the link to this PDF in the description below. I would recommend you to go to a tool like Notebook LM and upload this PDF and ask Notebook LM to actually explain you how this graph can affect you and your personal career. Now, if you look at the bottom, skills like manual dexterity, endurance and precision are declining really quickly. And we've made a detailed video about these top skills and the highest paying careers according to the WEF report. I'll share that link in description. So now that we know what the top skills are, the real question is how exactly do you learn them? And where exactly should we learn them from? And for that, we have today's partner Coursera. Coursera is one of the world's leading online learning platforms that partners with top universities and companies worldwide. They offer thousands of courses with professional certificates from top universities across diverse fields, including AI and technology. With flexible, high-quality content, learners can build skills that employers actually value. So whether you're from a technical or a non-technical background, it is a great place to start your learning journey. So to make your life easy, I have shortlisted top courses from Coursera and I'll individually break them down to help you understand which one will suit your needs the best. The biggest confusion that beginners have is that Ansh, how do we start learning these subjects and what should be the approach when I'm planning my career moving forward? And there are multiple tips that you can consider. So what we've done is we've organized all of these tips across three chapters. In each of the chapters, I'll explain you the right mindset and the approach towards upskilling yourself and also recommend you some important courses that can help you get started as a beginner. You can be a person from any age, from any background, from any kind of a skill set, and you can still start learning these things from scratch. So make sure you watch this video till the end because I will be sharing a bunch of tips that will help you plan your career to stay relevant in the next five years. Now, chapter number one is all about having an orthogonal approach to AI. Now, don't worry if you're understanding this word for the first time, because orthogonality might sound like a fancy word, but it's pretty simple to understand. By definition, it means events that are statistically independent, which means that one event does not affect the other in terms of the outcome. Now, having an orthogonal approach towards AI means that you always work hoping that AI models will only get better from here. You position yourself and your career in a way that you benefit from AI advancement rather than competing with it. So on one hand, there are people who are betting on the fact that AI will not improve, but I want you to be on the other side where you are betting on the fact that AI will improve. Think about it this way. Instead of trying to build or change the AI models, work on building tools, ideas or products that use AI in smart and newer ways. Do you remember the popular Chinese startup Manus? The founder of Manus summarized it perfectly when he said that be excited and not threatened. So they have decided to work orthogonally to model development. 
So even they have decided to work in a way where they are betting on the fact that all of these models will improve. The question is, how do you follow this approach? There are three simple suggestions to get started. Number one, work alongside AI and not against it. Number two, you need to build skills and experience with products that are using AI as a co-pilot. So you basically understand the first principles of your subject, prompt AI tools, validate them, and then build on top of them. And number three, focus on your unique strengths or creativity that AI can support but not replace. Now, if you want to improve the way you prompt, you can check out the Google Prompting Essential Specialization and Prompt Engineering for ChatGPT course by Coursera. In these free courses for beginners, you'll learn how to apply prompt engineering to effectively work with ChatGPT and practice writing effective prompts using five simple steps. You'll also learn how to apply the prompting framework for data analysis, create tables, timelines, and summaries of long PDFs. And after completion, you'll get a completion certificate certificate which you can add to your CV and LinkedIn profile. Now here is something fascinating about the evolution of AI businesses. Past AI startups required PhD level knowledge and technical expertise. But today's successful AI companies like Cursor and Windsurf are focusing on the generalist adaptability of consumers and they're focusing a lot more on their business models and target customers instead of trying to build AI models. So basically, if you're starting an AI app or an AI business, you have to focus on finding the right problems to solve and then bet on the fact that AI will only keep on becoming cheaper and better. Because today, the most valuable skill for founders is not their technical capacity. It is soft skills like sound judgment, clear communication, strategic thinking, and an experimentation mindset. Now, having good taste is another human trait that AI will struggle to replicate. Christopher O'Donnell, former head of product at HubSpot, had put it very beautifully. He said that AI is very helpful in that it can design a thousand pairs of sneakers, but it can't wear the sneakers for you and it can't tell you which sneakers are cool. So you need to embrace your inner Edison because waiting for AI to mature is going to be a very big mistake. Instead, founders and young professionals should jump in and get their hands dirty as soon as they can. Young professionals and founders who start experimenting with AI today will gain valuable experience and proficiency that late adopters will find it very difficult to match. Over time, this AI forward experimentation will become a deeply ingrained organizational habit, which in turn will allow the organization to adapt to the next wave of AI tools faster than their competition. And if you want to learn how to automate these tasks at work, you should check out this generative AI automation course from Coursera. You'll learn how to create powerful capabilities within LLMs, and you can also automate reading, creating PDFs, PowerPoint, videos, and a lot more. And of course, post-completion, you will get a career certificate from Vanderbilt University. The best part is that this free course is beginner level, and you can learn all the basics of AI automations without any prior experience. Now, a very big mistake that most of you will make is that you will quickly start learning all of these tools without having the right mindset. And without the right mindset, you will always end up losing your consistency. So to understand that, let's move on to chapter number two. This is a picture that dates back to 1900s in New York City. Everyone is celebrating the festival of Easter. And as you can see, every single vehicle that you see here is a horse-drawn carriage. Now, fast forward 13 years to 1913, this is the same street, the same location, but now every single vehicle is a car. Every horse was removed and replaced by a car. If in the year 1900s, someone had said that horses would be completely replaced, people would have just laughed and said that they've been here for centuries and they will always have a place in society for transportation. But that wasn't the case. The horses were taken out of the business very quickly as soon as a cheaper alternative was introduced. Now, this is very similar to the times that we are living in. And I'm telling you folks, all of the routine jobs that you see today that do not require creativity and much of thinking will start disappearing in the next two to three years. And if your work is extremely predictable, and if you can create a prescription for your work and break it down into proper followable steps and checklists, 
in most cases, there is going to be an AI tool that will automate it by 2026. This includes manual work like data entry and quality assurance. And a lot of practical evidence is already here. Klarna, the global payment solutions company, has revealed that it has already started adopting AI agents at their work. Their CEO has confirmed that AI is now handling 2.3 million monthly chats, work that would usually require 700 full-time people. Almost all big tech companies are resorting to AI-based processes. All of these pointers were actually discussed in a very interesting podcast and we'll share the link in description. But it basically spoke about the fact that industrial revolution replaced a lot of physical labor. But the AI boom is replacing human intellect itself. It is smarter, faster, and it has access to unlimited information and it is multilingual. There's a very high chance that AI will divide our community into two segments. The first will be hyper creators. These will be people who will start creating content, documents, websites, all kinds of content using AI simply because they were early to the market. And then we'll have hyper consumers, people who will be trapped in consuming things that are being released by these hyper creators across domains because everything will start looking absolutely amazing. Every ad that you come across will be fine-tuned to you. Every single piece of content that you see on the internet will be hyper-oriented towards your likings and personal divides. Every piece of content that you see across social media will be curated by AI and it will be designed to make sure that you stay hooked. And this divide will be even more devastating than it is already is today because the productivity gap between these two sections of society will not be 10 times but almost 1000 times. Think about it. A bunch of hyper creators who understand how to maintain their energy levels, maintain good focus and consistently learn all AI tools. These categories of people who enter AI agents, automations and hyper creation on time will eventually have more time on their hands and they will spend all of this extra time eventually automating even further tasks by creating systems around each and everything in their company and keep moving up the ladder. So it's very important for you to be in the flow of evolution and possess an experimentation mindset. And with time, there's going to be a rise in outcome arbitrage which means that companies will start buying cheaper AI-generated outcomes instead of expensive human talent and this will become more and more common and they will keep releasing more and more products at a cheaper cost. Now, if you want to learn how to use AI to increase your productivity, you should check out the Google AI Essentials Specialization and Generative AI with Large Language Models on Coursera. These courses are completely free and any beginner can start their AI journey with them online. In these courses, you will learn how to use generative AI tools to develop ideas and content and speed up your daily work tasks with practical skills. You'll also understand how fine-tuning, reinforcement and evaluation work works within large language models. You can dive into the latest research on Gen AI to understand how companies create value with cutting-edge technology. Now, even though I've given you a bunch of tips, without having this one last component, you will always end up getting lost and not actually hitting your targets. To understand this, let's move on to chapter number three. Here is something you might not have noticed. Technological adoption cycles are shrinking and we are becoming impatient day by day. So electricity took almost 50 to 60 years to become mainstream. This is from the 1870s to 1920s. The telephone took more than 50 years from 1876 to the 1980s. The internet took 30 years from the 1960s military use to 2020 with Geo. Smartphones took 15 years. 2007 was the iPhone launch and by the 2020s, everyone had a phone. Social media took just 10 years. 2004 was Facebook and by 2014, it was common everywhere. LLM models like ChatGPT4 started becoming popular by December 2022. And in most cases, all of these will become widely accepted within a span of three to four years. So the speed at which we are adapting to such changes is shrinking. We are evolving faster than ever. Industries and businesses are evolving faster than ever. But ironically, our learning cycles are getting slower. People are not learning at the same pace at which the market expects them to learn. So we need to catch up with the pace of changes in the market by increasing the pace of our learning. And to do that, you need to have a sharp focused mind and a destination based goal rather than open open-ended goals. For example, if you want to learn image generation, you should not give yourself one month just to learn the fundamentals of image generation. You should probably have a bunch of goals, weekly goals that 
that I will make XYZ using the photo model and you should pick a project and start using AI to get to that destination. This gives you a clear goal and proper motivation, timeline-based motivation to learn a particular skill. Now to help with this, you can use AI to create a planner for you. And I've put together a list of prompts that you can use for different use cases. You'll find all of them in the description. Now here is an interesting story that might sound unbelievable. So apparently, Aristotle was narrating an anecdote where Plato was upset about the fact that more books were being published than needed. He thought that this would disrupt the very art of perception building through in-person discussions, debates and basic conversations. Plato must have felt that we would become mere parrots, repeating shared experiences without finding or creating our own systems in case books became very popular. But it turns out, books have actually acted like instruments of mass revolution. People can now share their thoughts across the globe through centuries and have their ideas and systems shared across communities just through books. Now isn't this crazy? People were against the concept of books at a point. And today, everyone actually acknowledges or appreciates when somebody is reading a book. But if you really think about it, the argument against books does make sense. Because you cannot update a book once it has been published. A book is always written from a perspective of a specific author. So if you consume a book on a new topic without your own personal study, you will end up adopting a lot of biases that the author also had. So all the arguments did make sense. But the benefits of the book are always over empowering than the negatives of a book. And that is why books became a scalable solution for spreading education. Now, apart from all of these things, there are certain skills that will help you stay more relevant. The ability to communicate better, the ability to explain your thoughts into text, having a clear state of mind, having a healthy body, having good energy levels, all of these things will help you a lot to stay ahead. In fact, I personally believe that in the next five to six years, all big tech companies will start asking for your blood reports along with your resumes because no company would like to bet on a person who might fall sick 10 years in the line. I find so many people neglecting their health. I would recommend you folks to get regular body checkups so that you always know the kind of deficiencies you have. Spend enough time meditating, spend enough time journaling your thoughts so you're consistently working not just on your skill sets but also on your mind and your body. So to quickly summarize everything that we discussed, please make sure that you're betting on the fact that AI will improve. Make sure that you're working alongside AI regularly improving your skill sets and whatever you plan have a destination based plan have a timeline for all the skills that you will learn and please make sure that you're taking care of your mind and body make sure you click on subscribe and let me on the comment section which lesson or learning was your favorite this is your dost Anshmera, and you are learning from the cutting edge school enabled by the zero one network by zero dha